Hey there, everybody. It's Left Dad Join again, and uh, thought I might bring you another game of Master Brian 2. Uh, haven't actually uploaded the last one yet, so I might upload them both at the same time. Uh, lots of goodness. So I'm going to start out. Well, let me pick. Well, let me try that again. Um, I'm going to be playing on the same settings as last time pre warp large, eight players, impossible difficulty. And I'm going to be doing something completely different. I'm making a custom race. We want to look like the Alarians. And no, not for the reasons that you think. We want to look like the Alarians because we don't want the Alarians in this game. That is because we're going to be telepathic. And telepathic is a pretty awesome pick, although it is expensive. Um, you, so you get a, di a diplomacy bonus, which we probably don't care much about. Um, we the big thing is that you can mind control populations with just nothing but a cruiser. If you have a cruiser over an undefended world, you get the world. You just get everybody on the world on your side for free, um, which is a pretty big deal considering that every single other race needs to build, you know, a shit ton of transports and then send them over slowly and then fight a battle that you might lose and then you have to assimi assimilate the population which can take a very long time depending on your government uh, and they also get a 10 percent bonus to spying and spying as you might know is amazingly good so uh telepathic is a strong pick i have been enjoying fiddling around with it lately so we're going to take telepathic oh as for our negative picks we're going to do the usual Negative ground combat, negative ship defense, and repulsive. Uh, I might try a game without repulsive one of these days, but uh, for now, I'm I'm just finding it's it's a good practice, and it's a good I mean it's a good pick. It's you know you get six extra points, and um, yeah, I mean the disadvantage is really not that huge. So okay, at least on the higher difficulties. Uh, where the AI is liable to attack you for no reason anyway. So, starting with telepathic. Now, um, picking a government with telepathic is really good. And picking any of this stuff in the left column is really bad. Why is that? This stuff in the left column only affects your race. And since we're going to be capturing a ton of other races, uh, all this stuff is going to be much less important for us. As a matter of fact, we might not make a single colony ship all game long. How does that sound to you? Uh, it sounds pretty good to me, because colony ships are friggin' expensive, and non-production oriented races uh, don't like making colony ships very much. So anyway, the choice is down to democracy or unification. Um, democracy, of course, being the more research oriented race with more money and more beakers. Unification being um, more of the production oriented race with um, defensive spying bonus, uh, uh, increased worker productivity, increased food productivity. Um, but one of the biggest reasons I like to choose unification is I mean it's a really strong pick. I mean it's a really 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 strong government just to start with. But telepathic gets rid of its key disadvantage, which is that it assimilates very slowly. Telepaths assimilate instantly, always. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, also, there's a somewhat more subtle thing, which is that you can have mixed race worlds, and I think. Um, those get a negative 20% morale penalty, but not under unification. Nope, nope, nope. So I feel like uni unification and telepathic just go together so well. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go with. And then for your third pick, you have a ton of options. Um, unfortunately, none of the really awesome ones, although I guess Lithoborn and Tolerant are also both race specifics. So you don't really want those either. There's a lot of choices here. I've been fiddling lately with trying creative for the third pick. Um, the trouble with going creative is that you have no picks left for anything that helps you early game. So you're really, it's, it's really tough to know how to play in the early game. I think there are probably some really strong strategies you can come up with with creative, but I haven't thought of any yet. So if uh, you can think of any, uh, let me know. Uh, it's it seems like it could be a really potent combo, but you you really have to plan. Uh, you can't just cross your fingers. Um, 
anyway, so I think I'm going to go with, and this might be a little surprising, transdimensional. Now, what is so good about transdimensional? Um, it seems pretty lackluster when you look at it. Um, plus four combat speed and plus two ship speed uh, outside of combat. Um, seems a little bit lackluster, but it is quite powerful early game, and that plus two parsecs per turn means it means that you don't don't have to research ion drives. So that's a huge section of the research tree that you can just avoid and you gain a tremendous amount by just not having to go there uh, very early. So you can wage war much sooner and much more effectively than any other race. And furthermore, and this is where our whole strategy is gonna come from, this combat speed bonus also applies to fighters. Yes, it applies to fighters, which uh, are surprisingly strong early game so we're gonna see we're gonna see that in action uh, and we have three picks left really not a lot of choices omniscient could be a fun one but we don't really need it so I'm gonna go with large and rich homeworld um, to make sure that we actually have the capability to produce our original um, original attack force so we're gonna it's gonna tell call this tele uni tele trans uni Something like that. I, don't know. I just want to give a descriptive name. Laurel. Oops, I guess we picked yellow on accident because I clicked too quickly. So, for starters, we're going to do what we do every game, which is see what's in our home system. Looks like we've got a medium ocean abundant planet. we got this gas giant. That's uninhabitable. Uh, we could use planet construction to turn it into a planet later, but we're unlikely to ever do something like that in this game. But this medium ocean abundant planet, um, though it only has four max population, uh, compared to our homeworld 16, uh, it will be a good housing colony to help increase um, the number of people on the homeworld. So we're gonna prioritize the colony base, even though it will take us nine turns because of all of the pollution. So much pollution, look at that. Look at how much pollution we lose, or production we lose due to pollution. I think the way the mechanic is explained is that the industry has to spend some of its production cleaning up the pollution. I think that's how it goes. So, got the colony base coming. Gonna buy the extra little bit so we can switch back into research right away. And we're gonna research freighters so we can actually feed the colony base or the uh, housing colony, whatever, whatever this thing is. Just gonna make housing. And it's, it's funny, you house yourself out of starvation and okay i don't know if i'm actually going to make a spy spies are strong with um telepathic okay next we're going to get extended fuel cells extended fuel cells not where we can make scouts and so on and so forth so get the freighter fleet out um now our colony is no longer starving so it's going to be uh let's see making 114,000 people every turn making babies so uh extended fuel cells and all this junk that's all really basic and now assuming we don't yet have contact with alien races we're probably going to want to build outpost ships to launch our attack probably Food plus one. Okay. Oh, what are you? Attack bonus. Ship raises speeds. Raises defense, defensive bonus. Sure, I'll hire that guy. Uh, even though he might actually slow down my attack. But And I never remember to put ship leaders on. Okay, so yeah, we haven't seen anybody yet. Uh, we should make a scout. Just, just basically so we don't lose our outpost ship to space monsters. And we only really need one scout because we are transdimensional, so this scout is going to get its job done really fast. Now, where are we likely to want a colony base? It's a little tricky. You, you want to open yourself up to attacking people, but you don't want to open yourself up too much. Let's see. No, we'll probably we'll probably want a colony 
base or not push it there. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe here. Maybe here. Mm. Okay. Well, th this this opens up all four of these worlds, or at least it'll give us um, give us contact with the aliens on those four worlds. So that seems like a pretty good pretty good plan. Colony ship, and the important one, outpost ship. Uh, this this will basically allow us to launch operations farther than we could otherwise. Now, here we're going to do something insane. We're going to research fighter bays instead of reinforced hull. Normally, you want reinforced hull every single time because it is so, so good. It's just, it's so good. Reinforced hull. Um, reinforced hull and heavy armor are both really good. Heavy armor, you skip, usually, for automated factories. Um, but, yeah, we're going to get fighter bays because that is the cornerstone of our entire strategy I think and if that's not a reason to get something okay I'm gonna keep this scout here because we are going to we might want to use it and we don't want to lose it okay we're in contact with somebody oh the silicoids yes yes the reason I'm saying yes is the silicoids are pretty much the best possible race to conquer um, and that is because they are lithovores, so they don't need any, any food, and they're tolerant, so they don't make any pollution, or they don't care about pollution. And both of those things add up to amazing production colonies. Like, we can get fi 15 workers going on their home world uh, without any pollution at all. That's going to be an insane production base uh, when we take it. Now, we just have to make sure of a few things. Okay. So the one disadvantage, they do have that population growth negative. Um, and that, yeah, that's it. So yeah, you wanna sort of really inspect the races you're going up against, um, partially because you want to know what bonuses they have and you can start thinking about how you're gonna use their worlds and their people. And the other is that you want to make sure they're not um, telepathic also, because if they are telepathic and you are telepathic, guess what? You cannot mind control their world anymore. Oh, we are being attacked by the silicoids. Get out of there, little scout. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Fighter bays. Okay, we have researched fighter bays. Now there's a bit of a question. Um, do we research fusion beam or do we research mass driver? Mass driver is a little bit stronger, I think. It's also a little bit more research. It's 250 research points to get up to fusion beam. And, um, uh, it's, excuse me, 200 research points to get a fusion beam and 250 to get up to mass driver. Mass driver is a bit stronger though. I haven't really tested this out. I think it's a bit stronger. Fusion beam is two to six points of damage. Um, modified by point defense and then mass driver is six I think mass driver is just solidly a better option okay so the trick here is that the silicoids may knock out our outpost uh, which would set us back oh, oh no don't do that don't do that here do this this there we go uh, now we're gonna start out by designing uh, some kind of Starbase Buster. Might even name it that, Starbase Buster. Busta. Bust. Ah. Starbase Busta. Okay. So it's going to have extended fuel tanks because we need that to reach the world. And it's going to have interceptors. And that is it. Just, th yeah, three of them. So it is going to take two of these ships to take down the star base. Uh, hopefully